guys, this is Martin Perdomo, the Elite Strategist, and you're listening to Latinos and Real Estate Investing Podcast. And today I have Damien uh, Gonzalez with me here today, and he is the VP of Acquisitions for Skill Property Finders. And we and he is absolutely, he and his team are absolutely killing it, finding deals in this market. And Damien, you know, one of the questions I get mostly asked, right, when I'm talking to people is, how are you guys finding these deals? How are you guys, how are you guys doing the deals that you're doing right now Mm -hmm. in this marketplace and how are you guys finding those deals right Uh, a lot of guys are struggling to uh, get deals right now you got people buying stuff on the mls which is um a no-no for us right Mm -hmm. we we (laughs) we just don't we don't buy on the mls that there's no deals there um it's hard to find them when um you're trying to do the 70% rule on the mm-hmm. MLS. They're just not there. So uh, I had someone from one of our uh, one of our lending partners was here. You was you you saw him. You met him. Mm-hmm. He was in the office here this week, and he literally he's an investor as well. And he literally what he wanted to do is he was coming here to find out. And we add him to our to our buyers list was to find out. Hey, how are you guys finding these deals, right? Mm-hmm. And that's our capital partner, guys. This is our capital partners. They're the, they're the ones that lend us money to do our deals. And um, I spent some time with him. So, if if you got a, if we got a listener out there, we have an investor out there. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about who you are, what you've been doing, your role here with us in the company, and, and things like that, just so people can get to know you a little bit. All right. So, just really quickly, my name is Damien Gonzalez. I'm, I'm 35 years old. Um, I've been with Scale Property Finders now almost a year. I've been within real estate really for just about three or four years. I mm-hmm. got started at the end of 2019 when I kind of just needed something to do. Like mm-hmm. my construction business fell apart and I found myself on YouTube searching for the next thing. And I found wholesaling. Some guy was like, hey, go out and tag property addresses and, mm-hmm. you know, skip tracing them and call the homeowners and get them on the contract. So I did exactly what was told to be done in the video. And four months later, I closed my first deal. Fast forward two years later, I'm now on like deal number 45. I have a few mm-hmm. clips under my belt. I've done some creative deals as well, and I'm just scratching the surface. There's still a long way to go. We're just getting started. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. Okay. So if, if someone is out there listening, right, someone is out there listening to, to us right now, mm-hmm. and they're you, but they're you um, three years ago, right? What would you tell them if they're trying to come into the real estate business today in this market, in this super hot market that we're in right now? I guess the first thing I would, you know, tell someone is they have to shift their mindset around finding deals. Okay. You know, finding deals is not just finding deals. What we mainly do is solve problems. Mm. You know, a lot of the times the homeowners that we do find and we do get deals from are distressed homeowners um, going through all different kinds of life crises. Sometimes they're just living too far from managing a property. Sometimes it's a death in the family. Sometimes it's foreclosure or a tax sale. So the first thing is shifting your mindset around what is a deal. So if you learn that first you connect with a homeowner in any which way, every method works, guys. There's no secret. We text, mm-hmm. we call, mm-hmm. we send mail, we knock on doors. Mm-hmm. Consistency. If you do those things consistently, you'll come across a homeowner that is going to have a problem and if you help them solve a problem then you're going to be doing a real estate transaction with them so that's the biggest thing guys finding a homeowner that's in a distressed situation and a lot of the times their problem is so big to them their world is ending for us it's just a phone call or two and we can usually resolve whatever matter it is got it so what so so that's a heap mm-hmm. of a mountain you said text you said this you said that you, you gave a heap of a mountain you got A guy out there that wants to do his first flip or wants to do um, his first his first deal or his first wholesale what's the first thing you would tell him to do first thing I would tell him to do is go drive for dollars that is one of the best ways to pull in distressed properties go drive around your neighborhood go drive around your mom's neighborhood go drive around your family or friends neighborhood and look for the nicest ugly house in the neighborhood or just go look for ugly houses in a nice neighborhood and just get that property address down and go and search them on fast people search and all you're doing is calling the homeowner asking hey i just is that free it's that's free fastpeoplesearch.com guys is free um my best advice is search by the property address don't search by the homeowner's name 
And whatever phone numbers come up, just call them and say, hey, my name is Damien. I was driving by your property. Um, have you ever thought about selling? Two things you're going to get, yes or no, you have the wrong number. Okay, and if they say if they say yes, what next? If they say yes, then it's a matter of you know starting the process of physically getting to see the property. The next thing we do, you would schedule a walkthrough with the seller, and you know while you're scheduling a walkthrough, you also want to build rapport with them as much as you can on the phone, letting them know who you are, what you do. You also want to relate to the homeowner and really try to feel out their motivation. Why is it that they have this property sitting here for so long and they either haven't fixed it or nor have they sold it yet? Mm -hmm. So when I was doing this years ago myself, you know, building, building what we, what we're building together now, and I was calling on these people. One of my biggest thing was one of the biggest objection I would find is who are you and how do I know you're not a scam? Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Well, we, do, you, do you get that a lot? Oh, we way? still get that a lot. Now, we, we, we have homeowners that they'll even go as far as inviting us to their property and then they don't want to let us inside because they don't know who we are or, mm -hmm. or trust who we are. Um, really, it comes down to how good of, how good are you at selling yourself and selling your skills and what you're doing. Um, if anyone feels like you are, in a, you are some kind of scam in any way, they won't do business with you. So it's really just learning to diffuse that and just speak to them as a person. Like, let them know who you are. Let them, the biggest thing for us, we're local. So when... We run into that issue. We just tell people, hey, we're local out here. Our office is in here. Prior to me having an office, I would just start talking about landmarks and mm -hmm. things in the area. I would relate to like, hey, yeah, I go to Walmart. I, I shop here and I shop there. And I know the, the, the main things in the town. I know the courthouses. Just relating to the seller in any which way or form that I can mm -hmm. just to let them know like, no, I'm not looking to scam you. I'm actually an investor looking to do business. I've even had people... Um, hey, go check out my Facebook, you know, go see I'm a family man. Go, go, go check me out on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, and even as far as, Hey, I send them my driver's license. If I had to, if, if mm -hmm. I feel like I'm, it's a strong transaction, I'll send them my driver's license or a business card. If I have one, just saying, Hey, this is who I am. You know, I'm legit. I'm here to buy your house. So, so, what is the response when, when you send someone your driver's license? Uh, they usually would smile and then laugh and like, oh, you're serious. And I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. I'm not here to you know, mistreat you or do any ill forms. So you're like, I really want to buy your house. So usually when you get to that point of sending someone your driver's license, if I, you had to, um, by that, by that time, they're usually trusting you, you know, they usually start to feel confident. Like, okay, this guy is really not trying to pull a fast one on me. Got it. Now you asked me a question the other day. We're in a meeting. You asked me a question and I'm going to ask you the same question. Mm -hmm. Knowing what you know now. Right, with the experience that you have now, um, if you were looking to get a deal right now, right? So, if you were looking for maybe a duplex, as you know, our listeners are mostly um, beginners for the most part, or beginners are some, and some veterans, some seasoned veterans. Um, you know, we we are just totally immersed in this business. We this is what we do all the time, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were uh, knowing what you know now, you are looking to get a deal in the next two weeks. Because I think this is why people tune in. This is why people listen to our content. It's because we give them, give them good freaking, you know, actionable steps that they can take. If you were looking to do a deal, what would be the four things that you would do right now to get a deal? Or what would be a few things you would do right now to go get a deal um, without spending money, because we spend a lot of money on, on software and this and that, and we have VAs and we have all kinds of systems, but you're a solo guy and you're looking to get a deal. What are, what are those things that you would do right now to get a deal in two weeks? Well, first I would start with, if you're on social media, which almost everyone is, is to post on your own personal social media. Hey, I'm looking to buy a house within X amount of the next 30 to 60 days. And if you post that every single day for the next two weeks, somebody will send you a message or tag you in some post. Like one of my friends recently did, as I was posting, a friend tagged me in a property that I'm about to go see. Um, and I would have known of that property until he tagged me. So that's the first step. Post on social media. Step number two is contact every wholesaler that you know. If yes. you don't know how to find a wholesaler, just call the We Buy Houses for Cash Guys. Mm -hmm. The ones that post the bandit signs, the ones that put up, post ads on Craigslist, the ones that post on Facebook. And also the guys that are posting deals already on social media, call those guys. They are the deal finders. Mm -hmm. The next step I would do is contact every realtor that I know. Now, realtors are not the greatest source to find deals, but you only need one realtor mm -hmm. to bring you a deal. Um, lastly is, again, Facebook and Craigslist, guys. Facebook and Craigslist uh, for sale, um, 
Homes for sale on Facebook and Craigslist is one of the best ways to find deals. They don't come very often, but they're there. If mm -hmm. you're constantly checking it every single day for the next two weeks, just 20, 30 minutes a day, you'll come across something because I have and other people are. Right? Mm -hmm. I believe you started your business off of finding deals on Craigslist. 100%. So it's out there, guys. The, matter, the biggest thing is just consistency. People start with whatever it is. They might start with the Facebook or Craigslist or some other method of marketing, and then they stop because mm -hmm. they say there's no deal. But if you're consistent with it every single day, you'll find something. What are your What are your thoughts um, on bandit signs? So first of all, tell people what bandit signs are. First of all, um, uh, uh, total disclosure: we're not encouraging you to do bandit signs because they're illegal in a lot of mm -hmm. uh, townships and in a lot of areas. They don't uh, the townships frown upon it. They're fine. We are we are we don't encourage you to do that. Although I will admit that I did it for a long time. <laughs> I have has to. done it too. <laughs> There's particular strategies, particular ways to do them. Um, I'll share one of my ideas and one of the ways I learned to do them. But I want to get from Damien first of all, what are bandit signs? Tell people what are bandit signs, and I want to get from you your feedback as to uh, what are your thoughts on bandit signs these days. Um, so bandit signs, first of all, are are just uh, usually they're like eighteen by twenty four. They're just we buy houses for cash sign. You you put your not your phone number. You want to put a phone number that a Google number, a Google number, or maybe a burner number. Um, if you use call rail, you can put a call rail number on it. That's just so. Um, so you put these bandit signs up. We buy houses for cash. You, usually you put them up on like telephone posts, trees, anywhere that people could visibly see them. Um, I've personally done quite a few deals off of bandit signs. Um, they work. They work. Mm -hmm. They require consistency. Um, really, handwritten bandit signs I find work really very well as as well um, as far even the the ones that you purchase online. Um, they work well. So bandit sign guys are are, are just the signs of we buy houses for cash. You see them everywhere. Um, some townships do allow them. They they don't allow them on the telephone post. That's one hundred percent illegal. Pretty much everywhere I've seen. Mm -hmm. But some townships let you get the little stakes and post them up on the side of the roads, and mm -hmm. they won't bother you as long as they're like within whatever the rules are for the township. So look into it, guys. Um, bandit signs definitely do work, um, and that's just you know another one of those marketing methods that requires consistency. Because if you put your signs up, they'll take them down, and then yeah. what you have to do is put them up again. Yeah. So, so um, I'll give a quick tip here on what I learned, and I'm not suggesting that anyone does this. This is not my suggestion. I'm just sharing what I used to do. What I used to do is exactly what Damien said. I would take, I would go out on on um, Friday early morning or Sundays. I would put them on trees. Sundays at seven a.m. Guys, no one's out on Sundays in the morning. So you can pull over at the middle of the street, get up, get your ladder, put them on the thing, do your thing. Um, but one of the things that I learned is Friday evening, right? Zoning officers are gone. Mm. <laughs> right? You put your stakes, you go to Home Depot, buy Home Depot, buy the Walmart, and you put them in on the on the ground. And then Sunday afternoon, you go and you pick them all back up, hmm. right? And you recycle them, right? The zoning, they're, they're not there to take them off. You take them off, you can leave them, eventually they'll throw them out. But that was one of the things I used to do. And again, I'm not condoning it. I'm not suggesting you do it um, the way I did it. I'm just saying they worked and you find deals that way. Mm -hmm. Any other methods you'd like to share with, with our listeners on, on how to get deals? Direct mail, guys. Direct mail. Direct Tell us about mail. direct mail. What would you do and how do you do it? Um, simple. Um, it Really, there is a, some cost if you want to start. Um, I would drive for dollars, get maybe two or three hundred properties together, the most distressed properties that you can find, um, and just get a simple letter just saying, Hi, my name is Damien. I drove by your house at 123 Main Street. Um, I just wanted to know if you ever considered selling. Handwrite the letter, handwrite the address, put a stamp on it, put it in the mail. Somebody will call you. They will call you. And you'll definitely find someone that's needing to sell their property fairly quickly. My best deal I pulled in off of direct mail, it was a, a property. It was on uh, ARV. was $400,000. The owner was in Florida. And he was like, just make me an offer. Made him an offer of 82000 and he took it. Damn. Good deal. <laughs> Good deal, man. So, I don't know why mail, I didn't see that deal. Uh, that was way before. We were, I didn't even think I knew you at that time, gotcha, brother. Gotcha. So, so um, Damien, right now in this market, people... Not just in this market, but the market is hot. Everyone knows the market is hot. How do you deal with the objection of people wanting to get ARV on a property um, that's you know needs a ton of work? 
how do you deal with that objection? Well, the market is hot, and if I put it on the market, I could get this. Because that's probably the most common objection that you and your team deal with. Mm -hmm. How do you deal with that? Usually, we just educate the sales. Well, first of all, if there's no motivation for the person to sell in a timely fashion, then there might not be a deal. Not every deal is a deal, guys. Not every seller, even if the property is highly distressed, will want to sell at a discounted price. Um, but usually how we combat that is just educating the sellers. Like, here, here is why we need it at the price. Here's what we're going to put into the rehab. Here's what we're going to pay in uh, realtor fees and closing costs and all this other stuff. And educating them on why we need it at that number is usually how we get to the point of getting the property to a price that we need. Now, if the homeowner is still strong on their price, guys, Honestly, sometimes you just you just have to leave it, you know. It, mm -hmm. I I can't tell you how many times we've come across a good deal where the homeowner just didn't want to agree to a price that worked for us, and there's been deals that we've just had to let go. And there's some deals that the owner still owned the property, and I'm like, hey, what are you guys doing with it? You, you don't want to sell it to us for a price that works, and you don't want to list it on the MLS. So, really, it's just finding people at the right time. That's that's what it comes down to. You know, it doesn't matter. What you tell them, if they're not ready, they're not ready. That's right. You know, there's nothing you could do to make them ready. You can't, in our business, you can't create motivation is what I'm hearing from mm -hmm. you, right? You can't create a problem. The problem, either they have a motivation or they don't. And our job or your job as a wholesaler or the person negotiating that deal is to uncover that motivation and solve that problem. That motivation is usually a problem, mm -hmm. is it not? And solve that motivation for them. And um, all right, is there anything else you want to share? So someone's getting started. Someone just came across our video, listened to is listening to our podcast, and they want to get their very first deal. Is there any words of encouragement that you want to tell them that they should absolutely do to get on this fast track to do 40-something deals like you have in, in a couple of years? Just don't quit, guys. You know, I, re I remember October 2019, and I was uh, this. My life wasn't very great at that time. I was living in my mom's house, hadn't closed my first deal, I had no money, and I'm looking out the window, and I told myself, I'm going to close a deal before all the leaves fall off the tree. Long story short, all the leaves fell off the tree, and I didn't close the deal, and I was so mad at myself. And the biggest lesson I I I, I come back to is just having a conversation with my friend. At the time, and he was, I was telling him, like, man, I'm not making any money. I don't know what to do. Like, why am I still doing this? And the only thing he told me was that if you quit now, you'll never get it. Mm. You'll never have it. So my best message to anyone starting off, anyone just in the game, anyone just done their first or second deal, just keep going, guys. That's the biggest thing. Keep going. Keep whatever your goals are. Keep it in front of your face and keep chugging on every single day. That's how I was able to do 40-something deals. I just kept going. Some days I wouldn't talk to no seller. Some days I wouldn't have no appointments. There would be weeks and months that nothing would happen. But no matter what, I woke up with the mindset of a, today's the day I'm going to find a deal. The mindset. You use the key word. Yes, sir. The mindset, right? The mindset. So make sure you guys stay positive. Who you surround yourself with, who you're listening to, listening to guys like this guy right here, surrounding yourself with people like him. And where do you find the wholesalers, right? You gave a strategy uh, uh, for someone that's looking for a deal, right? Maybe someone wants to do a flip and they're listening and they want to do their flip or they want to find a duplex to rent or they want to find a, a quad or something from a wholesale at a good price to rehab and rent. Um, where do you find those wholesalers? You said you said you gave a few, I think, earlier, but yeah. I don't remember if you did. The We Buy Houses uh, That's for what cash. you said, yep. That's probably the fastest way to find a wholesaler. If you see any We Buy Houses for signs posted up online, uh, banded signs, um, just, you know, walking through the neighborhood. Maybe someone has some business cards up. Also, Facebook. If you look up um, just off-market deals for whatever town you're living in, off-market deals in Pennsylvania, off-market deals in Texas, you know, where, any, any state you're in, find those off-market um, forms on Facebook and just contact those wholesalers. They contact the guys that are just posting up the deals. Um, go to your real estate meetups, guys. That's mm -hmm. a really good way to uh, connect with wholesalers because they're out there looking for us. You know, mm -hmm. As we're looking for them, they're looking for us too because they need to sell the deals to people like us. So mm -hmm. if you put forward the extra effort of just looking for these guys, the We Buy Houses for Cast Signs, call every single one that you see. If you don't get someone, just keep calling. Eventually, good advice. somebody will call you back. Good, really good advice. Really, really good advice. And... Uh, lastly, we're buying, right? Awesome. So, 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 so we're buying. So um, we want to be a buyer. We're buying in Northeast Pennsylvania here in the Poconos. 
um, in Monroe and Pike County, anything that anyone wants to market and bring us deals, we are open to that, right? Mm-hmm. If the deals make sense. Um, we also, if you want to learn more on uh, how to run the numbers and you're just getting started, we also have a, a course, a wholesaling course on StraussburgREI.com. It's only $99. You can get it. It's it's really cheap. And we actually teach everything that we do. We give you our uh, we give you our ads that we put on Craigslist. We give you everything how to get started in wholesaling. So you could go to StraussburgREI.com. Um, I'm going to put the link below here so that uh, if you just want to click on the link, I'll, we'll put the link below here. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. And uh, Damien, I appreciate you, brother. Thank, Thank you for you, being sir. here, my Thank man. You for Thank me. you, sir. Remember, guys, don't quit, man. Keep, Keep going. Quit. Yes.